Um, my name is Kyle Christian. This is my project for EEL 6509, the effects of using GPS location over the direction of arrival on smart antennas. The problem statement of my project is the use of smart antennas is slowly starting to dominate the market. <coughs> Current smart antennas use DOA or direction of arrival to estimate where the cell user is and send the signal back to the user. I believe that you can use a GPS location from the phone status statement to use be to for better performance and, in and to increase the cell capacity. A smart antenna is an antenna array with signal processing algorithms used to identify attributes such as direction of arrival and signal strength. The antenna uses those attributes to communicate with the user via, via beamforming. There are multiple types of smart antennas also which includes switched beam smart antennas and adaptive brace smart antennas. Smart antennas receive a ping from a cell user and put the received signal through its algorithms. Once the DOA algorithms determine the direction of arrival, the antenna uses the beam forming to send the signal back to the user on the same angle of arrival. As you can see, the smart antenna the user sends a ping to the smart antenna. The smart antenna puts its puts the signal through its algorithms and forms a beam to send the signal back to the user. So what is DOA? DOA or direction of arrival is the direction from which the signal of a cell user in the cell comes from. DOA is determined through calculations in the signal processing algorithms at the base station. These calculations are made through one of the following methods. Multiple signal clarification or music, estimation of signal parameters via rotational invariance techniques or S-spirit, matrix pencil method, independent co component analysis, or other derivatives. What is beamforming? Beamforming is a way to constant concentrate most of the beam's power into one part of the array. To change the direction of the beam, a beam former controls the phase and amplitude of the signal at each transmitter. Through the use of beam forming, you can have multiple users on the same channel in the same cell. How would the GPS location work? The cell user sends a ping every couple of seconds to let the base station know where they are in the cell. If inside that ping, we could package a cell position report or a GPS location, we can aim our beam in that direction and cut down on the calculations of the antenna, giving it more precise path to choose its beam. How will the GPS location help? Through research and programming, in areas of flat surface and or areas with little or no line of sight hazards, such as the plains of Kansas or any farmland, GPS positioning would help because you can shoot a more focused beam toward the user, increasing the capacity of the cell by allowing more users to use the same frequency in each cell. How would the GPS location hurt? The GPS location would hurt in higher density city environments and mountainous regions by trying to shoot through buildings and not necessarily making it to the cell user. For example, if the tower was behind a building, from in between a building from a cell user and the user pings bounce off another building on the way to the cell tower, if the antenna tries to use a GPS location, it would aim through the building, almost guaranteeing failure. My solutions. The current approach is the most feasible approach. Although in flat areas, the GPS location approach works well because of the urban and mountainous regions, the GPS location fails. For my coding, I use the Microsoft Excel and use the Visual Basic program. I created a, my program includes about four pages of code, um, and you can see that following.
Okay, for my simulation, this is an intro into my simulation. Um, as you can see, I've divided my simulation up into four quadrants. The first quadrant is open land with a few hills because I wanted to see what it acted like in flat land. Quadrant two is a mountainous region. Um, each, all these peaks are very high, and you'll see that in, in another tab in my spreadsheet. The next quadrant three is small city with a few high rises. And then the quadrant four is a high, heavy city with very multiple high rises. This is the layout of the land in quadrant two. As you can see, it's a 60 meter tower, and each of these hills are real or small, so there should not be much interference at all. It should be almost flat land. Quadrant two, you see these mountain peaks. They go up to 50 meters tall, some of them, and some of them as small as six meters tall. In quadrant three, you see the the most a few high rises, mostly small houses, and in quadrant four you see a ton of high rises, and this is like I said, this is a side view from the x-axis, and in the last tab I should show my x-axis coordinates and my heights of each building and each mountain, and then you can go back to here, and you can see that not all of these are the same height, but from the other couple of tabs you can tell the maximum height for each row and then from the important numbers tab you can tell the height of each building. The buildings are, count are counted from the x-axis down the y-axis so 1 through 10, 11 through 20 and so on. Each mountain is counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from the x-axis or from the y-axis out. This is the first simulation. This is a simulation of the first quadrant of the open land. Um, you click the middle button, the antenna, to get the macro started. And as you see, when you travel, the ping is actually going over that hill that that's currently being used. That the pings, the blue area, is currently over right now. And when it gets down here to the antenna, you can see the antenna receives the ping. And I will draw some lines from where the antenna or the user is to the antenna and show you the way that the beam forming would work to send it back out to the antenna. And here here comes the lines. So the ping was sent from the user to the antenna in that direction and the user will send, a, or the antenna will send a signal from the antenna back to the user in that direction. If you use GPS and if you use DOA in this situation, both will get to the, to the phone. Both are 100% probability. Go into the next slide. This is a simulation in the second quadrant in a mountainous terrain. You click the smart antenna and let it start running. If you follow the ping, it'll get up here and hit this first mountain. Because I'm using Excel, it can't go to the exact point where it hits the mountain. But when I get to the where I show you where the arrows are going to you'll see where it bounced off the mountains and it came to the antenna. Okay, here I am drawing the ping directions. It hits this mountain, bounces off this mountain, goes up, hits the second mountain, bounces off the second mountain down to the antenna. If I use direction of arrival it's going to go back up towards the second mountain that it hit, hit that mountain, bounce off, hopefully hit the next mountain, bounce off and hit the cell user. If I use GPS it's going to get blocked because it's trying to go through these two mountains so the probability is going to be much less than it is if I use destination of arrival.
as you can see right here, the probability of using DOA is 95%. The probability of using DPS is 7.01%. The next slide is the third quadrant. Small CD with a few high rises. So you click the middle, the antenna will start going. As you see, it will bounce off a building because these two buildings on this side are shorter than the height that the ping is at at the current time. It will go through these or over these two buildings and to the smart antenna. Here I'm drawing the lines again to show you the direction that it bounced off. It bounced off the building right there and to the smart antenna. The, for the direction of arrival, it will take and take the same path that it came from the user. For the GPS, it will take a path go, trying to go through a building which it cannot go through and will not bounce off of it. So the, also, on this one also, the GPS is going to be a lower probability of reaching than the DOA. Here you can see the probability of DOA is 95%. Probability of a GPS is 2.58%. We go to the last one, which is the fourth quadrant. It's a city with heavy and multiple heavy city with multiple high rises. You can see it's going to bounce off multiple buildings. And of course, because I'm not using because I'm using Excel, I can't get to the exact point, so it's staying right here along this bottom row. But once it gets here, it's going to bounce off. I'll draw you the lines again. It bounces off multi the building multiple times. Once that on this side. Again on the other side. Back to the other side. Back to the other side. back to the other side back to the other side again back to the original side again and then to the smart antenna if we use DOA it's going to come from on the same path that the, uh, the signal arrived on if we use GPS it's going to try to go through buildings which it cannot go through Therefore, the GPS is probably not going to reach. The DOA is going to be around 90-95%. The percentages will be here. And as you see, the DOA is 90% and the GPS is 0%. So that is my project for EEL 6509. Thank you for listening.